Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. What's up? Um, I just went to see Joker, and I guess I'll just, uh, I'm gonna try to keep this spoiler free, obviously, because it's a movie I think for sure deserves a viewing from everybody, really. Um, whether you like superhero movies or not, I think it's the biggest movie I can remember seeing in years, as far as, like, the overall feeling I walked away from with it, maybe in my entire life, um, which is crazy to say. I mean, it's like, you would think that a movie with a comic book character wouldn't have too much weight. I mean, yeah, Endgame was really emotional and, like, it made me feel all the things. And so, to a degree, did Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, but this movie had me walking away kind of in a state of shock, I feel like, in a way. It's, it's really strange. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think that Joaquin Phoenix was possibly the and there's theories out there saying that he may not be the joker or that he is the joker i'm not really gonna say that at least not yet what i feel um but as far as the joker as a character being portrayed i think he's the best live action one we've ever seen um but i will say i don't want to see him in like, I don't want to see more movies necessarily with him, if that makes sense. I mean, maybe, but I kind of think that if this movie were just standalone, it would be more impactful, um, and it would hold its, it would hold on to its, like, weight for years and years to come. I think it could stand on its own and be, like, this brilliant movie, um, that people will remember for years and years and years. It, uh, I don't really know how to say this without sounding corny, but it scared me. Um, not like horror scary, but like it was very, it made me feel very like introspective and um, think about myself in a lot of ways, which is kind of messed up. Like there were just a lot of, I mean, the running theory is that he has some sort of schizophrenia or psychosis due to certain things that he does. And I definitely haven't been diagnosed with that, thankfully. But there were a lot of things that he does that I've noticed that I do or that people have called me out for doing um, throughout my life with sometimes the way I walk or the way I write stuff. Or um, like I told my mom at one point, and this is going to be hard to grasp if it's not something that you can relate to. It's going to be harder to understand this. But I told my mom at one point that I had this like deep, rooted fear that I was on the spectrum or something of that nature um, because I just feel like a lot of the times I can't connect with people um, I have a really hard time getting to know or talking to people just because the way my brain works sometimes makes me just feel so different that I just don't try or I don't put myself out there and I've been trying to remedy that by going against, against the green and just doing stuff <laughs> lately um, and being very honest with people and myself included. But for a long time, I felt very different. Um, I felt like I didn't understand why people couldn't understand me or be like me, like react to things like I would do or like say things in a way that I would do. Um, and it's complicated. Like... Even just the other day, I had a friend at work tell me that the thing he admires most about me and respects about me and is kind of playfully jealous of me is that regardless of what happens, I'm always smiling. And I've been not made fun of, but I've had people kind of laugh at the fact that I can't not smile for years and years and years now. Like, I could be yelling at you and I'm still smiling and... Only a few people have really seen me crack and, like, show through that facade. And it's weird because I developed that as, like, a coping mechanism in a way. Like, it's, it's, uh, 
it's from years and years and years of being told that I shouldn't be open or honest with people about how I feel because my feelings are unattractive. As it, it seems like it's almost more as a guy. Um, like you see girls post stuff where they're sad all the time and people just flock to help them. But if I post stuff where I'm upset or sad or angry, people just get all weird and close off and don't talk to me for a while. Um, I mean, lately, people have started reaching out and I've been able to be more honest. It's been really cool. Um, like, it's like the landscape's changing and that's really nice. But for the longest time, I remember vividly, like, the sounds, I'm not trying to call anyone out, but my grandpa specifically, it's like, you can't talk like that. That's very unattractive. No one's going to want to be around you if you're like this. Um, so I just, for the longest time, wouldn't really, like, I would end up just deleting anything I said if somebody said something like that. And eventually it reached a point where I just decided, screw it, I'm going to post what I'm going to post, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, I'm going to do what I want. And like I was very active and kind of like, the way I talk to people about me taking care of myself or like dealing with my issues is that whereas I used to go to therapy and used to get medicine, I can't always do that. Like I don't always have money for that, I don't have insurance now, so I'm just like, waging this weird war with myself where it's like I'm shouting out my feelings to people as much as I can like when it comes up when I'm feeling something I'm honest and I'm open with it because if I just you know hide away then I'm gonna get sick and I'm gonna wanna hide in my bed and not come out and because if I do come out and I'm gonna end my feelings and not open about it then if anything happens, I might, like, snap. Not like, I mean, I don't think I'm going to hurt anybody snap. That's not really me. But I'm very, like, self-destructive if things are going bad. Um, some of you may have noticed that. But I just don't enjoy that. So it was really weird seeing all these things that remind me of myself and somebody that ends up, you know, seeing, like seeing the world differently and like having his own weird idea of what's going on at all times and stuff like that um this isn't really spoiling anything too much but in the movie they make the laughing out to be like a neurological disorder and sometimes i've wondered like if me smiling is something wrong with me like it's not like i think it at the end of the day i think it's just a facade that i've society has kind of trained me to do but I do wonder if there's something like chemically off that does that beyond just my mental illness um, in all its glory. <laughs> um, and then, like I said, people have called me out for sometimes the way I walk because I just have this like goofy, carefree, weird, strange, detached from reality walk. Um, and just strange stuff like the way he wrote because he keeps a journal and the way he writes in the journal is very very similar to the way I write and that that just scares me it, um, it scared me seeing it so it's hard to talk about but at the same time I feel like I need to say that so that I can <laughs> it's like I'm talking about my relating to the movie not as a way to hopefully scare anybody but just to relay how I felt watching it so that I don't slip too much into what happens in the movie. Um, I guess to explain production side of things to also kind of keep the border going because I, I can't really dive too much into what happens. Um, there's a very like 60s-esque feeling to it um, in the production as far as visuals um, which is really interesting which is it's interesting because it's like it seems more like 80s as far as the setting, or 70s, 80s, somewhere in there, but it feels very 60s. Like, if you think back to that villains poster I edited or whatever for my last review, it's similar in, like, the fonts and stuff to that. So it's kind of cool because it has this old feeling, even though it's, like, a new movie doing new movie things, even though it's kind of set in an old time. It's all over the place, kind of, but it works. Um... But, 
other than that, let's uh, talk about like the sound design and stuff. The uh, noise, like, not, that sounds kind of disrespectful to call it noise, but like the foleying and like the, the sound design, like I was saying, is just, I don't know. I haven't been to a movie where everything felt so like sharp and real and just like you were kind of there. Um, like the gunshots in the movie seemed real like it made me tense up to be honest because it's like you know with everything that's happened over the past several years whenever a batman movie has come out it, there was some there were some nerves there going into that i was like oh god what if somebody decides like right now's the time um and hopefully nobody does anywhere um i've read that i think that there haven't been any outbreaks of situations and the journalists are all kind of pissed because they don't have anything to write about and I'm like that's a good problem to have um, but it made me tense up it was so crisp and felt like it was right there um, so whoever did the sound design for stuff like that and his footsteps occasionally and stuff like that kudos to you sir or madam because that was amazing just the sharp punchiness of the sounds to where it was like you were right there i, I don't i don't it sounds so silly because it's something that's usually you go to a movie and that's kind of background thoughts but like it was just something i don't remember seeing or well i guess experiencing in any movie recently i'm sure if i go to like movies that are based around war or something i'll probably get that vibe but for just a movie that was on its own which i guess it was kind of like a crime drama in a way um it was probably the best I've experienced, at least in a long time. Um, I think that the direction was very well done. Um, I'd say, like I said before, I think Joaquin Phoenix might be the best live-action Joker we've ever seen. Um, his portrayal of certain things and certain ticks and things, like I said, makes me scared for myself because it's like, man... I don't have the same illnesses and issues he does, but I do a lot of the same stuff. Um, or at least I notice it. I'm I'm hoping most people don't, but I feel like I, I totally see certain connections there and it freaks me out. Um, but because I guess it means that I could have gone the other way. If there were just one more box checked or something, I could be like really, really bad off. Um, and that's kind of creepy and makes me feel unsettled coming out of the movie. Um, it was... It was very interesting how they did it because I feel like... While it was wholly its own movie, I feel like they had like homages and things to the older movies that kind of make it feel like it's connected in a way. Um, but I, I don't really know... I guess what else to say right now, so without spoiling or talking about the actual movie or the plot of the movie, which I don't want to do, um, it's kind of like supposed to be a remake of The King of Comedy by Martin Scorsese back in, I think, the 80s, um, or maybe the 70s, but, um, but I haven't seen that movie, so I can't really relate it to that, but the plot, from what I understood, seemed similar in some ways. But um, it was just visually, audi aud auditorily, <laughs> um, orally, I guess, like A-U-R-A-L-L-Y, um, or whatever. I feel like it was all just a, a nice package that made it crack my top ten at least um, of all time, if not higher, um, just because it was such a well-done movie, and... It really shows, and I'm sure there are other movies that do this, but for such a high-profile movie to show the dark sides of mental illness and what can lead to that and what can come from that and how that can be portrayed, it was just very well done, I feel like. Um, I've never had a movie, you know, make me question my, my life up to that point as far as sanity and stuff like that um, or rethink of things to that degree. Um, it was really, as for the, you know, I always talk about my experience and the situation, it was probably the most 
viewed, I don't really know what I'm trying to say there, trafficked movie <laughs> I've been to since I started going back to the movies after getting the Regal Unlimited thing. The theater was not packed. I mean, it, I think movies must just be in a lull or something because there haven't really been anybody at any of the movies I've gone to. Um, hasn't been anybody. Um, but this one was like about, I would say, half capacity, which seemed like a lot as somebody with some severe social, and, uh, you know, situational anxiety, um, being kind of in the middle of that, because I always pick, you know, usually one row up from the handicapped seats and right dead center, so that way I can have basically the best seat in the house. Um, so I was kind of in the throng of all the people. And it was interesting, because um, there were like, some things that annoyed me, um, like there was this group of people to the right of me that would not shut up, like the entire movie, and for a while I was just really mad about it, because they were speaking in like full, like talking voices, not like whispers like you should probably do in a movie, but talking voices, like full volume, and it was frustrating, but then I started to hear this girl in their group saying things that made me think, well, maybe she deals with a lot of this too, and this is her way of, like, getting some of that out. Because, um, I mean, like I said, if I was dealing, or like I was kind of saying, if I was dealing with it my way as much as I was, then maybe this is how other people can get that out or whatever and feel something that relates to them in a way. Um, so I kind of was like, you know, I shouldn't be mad about this. Let her have her experience. I'll just focus more on the movie than I already was. Um, and then some guy bumped me in the back of the head when he was walking through, and that was kind of annoying. But it wasn't... It was just... I don't know. People were being laid back, I guess, and extra... different. I don't know. It made me think, man, it's kind of nice when I go a couple days out so that there's nobody there, practically. But at the same time, it was also, in its own way, interesting seeing it with other people there. Um... So yeah, I think it's just going to be a movie that, you know, if people go see it without thinking of it as a superhero offshoot movie, I think that it could have a pretty big impact on the film industry, um, at least when it comes to like drama and showing mental illness in movies and stuff like that. I think that there's certain avenues that could be explored further based on how this movie was made. Um, I'm sure on repeat viewings, I'll probably dilute it. I'll probably just see it as a Joker movie, which, again, still really good for that, too. But I was just really impressed with how <clears throat> it impacted me and made me think about a lot of things that I've dealt with my entire life. Um, anyway, this is going a little long, and I don't really have too much more to say without getting into plot, so I'm going to cut it off here. But I highly, highly, highly recommend anybody who enjoys movies to any degree to go see this movie if you get the chance. Um, I have to give it like, you know, a 9.5 or higher out of 10 because it's just, it meant a lot to me. It might sink a little bit, again, on repeat viewings. I'd have to check it out again later on down the road. But as of right now, day one, I think it was amazing. Um, easily one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. But anyway, I'll, uh, you know, try and get this edited, get it out today, because I think it's more important than the other stuff I've recorded recently. Um, so I'll try and have that to you here shortly. But I'll see you all in the next video, and have a good rest of your day. Bye.